Welcome to The Boat Show. Are you ready for some salt water, motor, or sail? A boating holiday is the perfect getaway. A sporting instinct, exclusive interiors. A shipyard that has a modern solution for its design in the name of tradition. No need to introduce the Nauta Boatyard, Finnish based maker of some of the most glorious boats ever made in the history of sailing. They started with big designs from Sparkman and Stevens, and now the boats are branded German Frères. There is an 80-footer on Fisher Island in Miami, which is going to be its port of residence. This boat was made with a distinctive mission, to be a big day cruiser, to do club regattas and generally have fun, especially throughout the day, obviously for its dimensions. I wanted a fast cruising boat, and I wanted a boat that was well made at uh, the Construction was great, very seaworthy, and that's why, and I wanted somebody behind it. And uh, in the case of Swan with the service and everything, and I've always loved these boats. This is actually my second one. I had the Swan 601 for, um, for about a year, and we loved the way the boat sailed. The boat is detailed beautifully, the boat sails beautifully, uh, has a nice helm. You can, tell, you can tell almost instantly, you get behind the wheel, if you have enough experience, you, know, you drive it for two minutes, you, get, you have the feel. And that was when I got on this boat, I said, boy, it's just this beautiful setup. We do a lot of day sailing down here. We have, uh, and one reason for getting this boat was a, a boat that could take the ocean, take the sea. We have quite a bit of wind down here. We have big sea. And uh, I needed something that was powerful enough that I can go out and sail in that kind of weather, uh, 20 to 30 knots. Stiamo navigando di Bollina, il vento reale di circa 10 nodi. We are tacking and the wind is at 10 knots. It's easy to reach double figures in this boat, like go over 10 knots, it's 24 meters of carbon. A very refined build for a particular brand, for an owner who loves his sailing. He's had many regatta boats and knows what to ask from Nauta. Seems banal to say this, but this boat is very easy to handle which means that the German Frères design and the construction itself were very accurate. All the manoeuvres are assisted, which means the winches are hydraulic. Boats like the coffee grinders from yesteryear don't exist anymore. The ones that men had with muscles, the ones that they needed to move, now it's just convenient buttons. The mast and boom are two of the elements that demonstrate the utmost in technology. They are obviously constructed like the rest of the boat in carbon. So what makes a good mast? It's light, but also very rigid. Light enough so it doesn't make the boat drift. Rigid against the force of the wind. The great quality of the construction of the scaffo in carbon and the latitude and the velocity the quality of the carbon build and possibility of speed can be seen inside, where traditional Nauta woodwork fits in seamlessly, with this whole idea of lightness. And how does it all plan out? There's the owner's cabin at the bow, two double cabins in the middle of the boat, the crew area at the stern, so the usual for a cruiser. Mm. 
La cucina è un po' l'unico posto dove si cede al compromesso con la leggerezza. The kitchen is the only place that compromises in this feeling of lightness and speed. There's everything you need, two fridges and ample everything else. You can see why this boat can really cruise. This is the owner's cabin. Full beam means that it occupies the whole length of the boat. We're at the bow here, you don't feel the sea so much, especially when it's choppy. Obviously, there's a big bathroom and some wardrobes. Non vi spaventate se il tavolo da carteggio sembra semplice, un po' vuoto. Don't think that the map table is minimalist, a little empty. Once upon a time on boats like this it would have been full of instruments. Now it's all on one screen with one control where all navigation data can be found. Radar indicators can be superimposed over the map or ship positions can be transmitted via AIS. So in short, it's all under control. All these big boats have an area for guests away from any dangers, in that there's no machinery or anything that can be annoying. At most, maybe the threat of a wave, if the sea is restless. Take a break, get comfortable. The Boat Show ignites your emotions. Quest'anno Mercury compie 75 anni di attività. This year Mercury will be 75 and we've come to Miami to celebrate. Many, many, many companies never have an opportunity to celebrate a 75th anniversary. So the dream, let's, let's get ready for uh, our 100th anniversary. And, and I think with the great people we have, the great products we have, the distribution we have, and you know, with, when, as we continue uh, our journey we're on, I'm looking forward to our 100th anniversary. And I'll still be young enough, I hope, to attend. Mercury is a big company with a long successful history, even though it's true that value isn't measured in time, but in what it's built. I think one of the products I'm most proud of is our recent launch of our new 150 horsepower engine. Uh, because the her heritage of Mercury has been about bringing new things, exciting things to the market. And when I think of our new 150 or smallest, lightest, easiest to maintain, and, and it's just been a huge success with all of our customers. And I think that says a lot about the heritage of Mercury and, and the things we've been able to do in the past and the things we'll do in the future. Mercury fu fondata nel 1939 da Elmer Karl It was founded in 1939 by Elmer Karl Kaikäfer, whose motto was a miracle can be built with just a dream, two hands, an honest heart and ambition. Well, the marine industry is quite frankly uh, has a lot of similarities to my early years in commercial vehicles. Uh, it's very much about product leadership. It's about meeting customer expectations. It's sold through a dealer or distributor organization. 
And the thing I just love most about Marine is the fact that it's about having relationships. Relationships with our dealers and distributors and the ability to really get to know our employees. And then last but not least, obviously, is our ability to relate and interact with our end customers. The company began by building little outboard motors which convinced the clients one by one. From the first inline four-cylinder to the most powerful on the market and from the first V6 to the speed records. Mercury has engineers and technicians that have designed and tested engines from the start. But it also understood, right from the start, that it was fundamentally important to try the engines out in their natural habitat. And not just in fair weather, extreme conditions too. For example, doing 40,000 kilometers non-stop, the equivalent of one trip around the world. Other successes followed, fruits of the company's constant commitment to research and experimenting. We have over 400 engineers in the uh, in the Mercury uh, in the Mercury company. Uh, it is a uh, it is a uh, a great great base of talent that we have. But along with the engineers, um, their job uh, is, uh, is, is complemented by people who have very high standards and who test our products. So we have a number of people, technicians, pilots, uh, and boaters who put our engines and put our inventions and put our, uh, our engineers' work uh, to the highest standards. And, uh, and uh, the work that they do, the teamwork that they have, is a very, very important part of our business. We know that racing is the hardest test of all because it pushes the engines in everything, which is why the sport department was created in 1973, which won the world speed record straight away. Mercury racing is a very important part of our heritage. Uh, so much of our history has come from the roots that Carl Kiefer has established in our business. He established several principles around performance, around reliability, around durability. Not only to get to a destination, but to get to a destination first. And that remains among our key principles in this business. Mercury Racing continues to be a, an important part of our, of our business. It's a proving ground. Uh, a lot of the technologies that we've established in our business have roots in the, racing, uh, in the racing category where they've been subjected to the most difficult conditions, high performance conditions, that we bring to the recreational market with great confidence because of the durability and the reliability that we've been able to demonstrate in racing. More recently, technology has taken up a more important role, not only in making the product better, but also making it nicer and safer to use. Our product development process is a pretty rigorous process, uh, but the thing I'd really like to emphasize about the process is the voice of the customer. And the fact that when we start a project, We'll go out and do customer surveys, market research, try to do even some sophisticated sampling techniques to get people to do forced paired comparisons of what they like the best and what pleases them more. And taking that voice then into our development process and taking that to our engineers, because the engineers need to know as well where they can make trade-offs and what's more important and what what can best meet the customer's needs. So I think one of the most critical things we do in the process is getting that voice to the customer up front. And then I don't think at that point we're a lot different than a lot of other companies. We, we do prototypes, development work, lots of testing, validation. But if you, if you don't have the voice of the customer right, right up front, you can make something that might not necessarily uh, please or exceed someone's expectations. We listen very, very hard to the, uh, to the needs of the marketplace. We spend a lot of time uh, visiting, obviously, different applications, different countries, uh, different regions, and uh, exposing ourselves to different, uh, to different markets. 
A good example of that is the fact that, uh, you know, for a long time, Mercury didn't spend a lot of time focused on the commercial part of the, uh, part of the marketplace, preferring to, uh, to, to dedicate many of our resources toward the recreational piece of the, piece of the business. We're listening very, very hard to the needs of the commercial marketplace because we believe that that's an important area of growth for our business. And we believe it'll make our recreational business even stronger because the commercial user has very, very high standards and the usage patterns in commercial exceed those of the recreational boater. And if we can earn our position in the commercial applications, we believe it'll make us a stronger recreational company. Since 1939, they've produced nearly 15 million Mercury engines. It's a modern company that dedicates resources to research and development with more than 450 engineers. It's also amongst the biggest in the world to recycle aluminium, with a plant that uses 95% less energy than needed to treat non-recycled aluminium. And Mercury has the biggest propeller factory in the world, another record. When you have 75 years to celebrate, it's, it's hard to pack it in a day. Uh, we're trying to do a, a, a week in the history of Mercury, and even trying to get down to 52 uh, specific things and memorable things we have done is, is difficult in and of itself. So we've had a worldwide celebration on January 22nd of, of this year, and that, that was the formal day. But as we move through the year, we've got activities planned open houses, celebrations, community activities uh, to really recognize the, the breadth that exists in our company and, and, and the heritage of, of the 75 years. So 2014 is a year, a year of celebration. I can't say where Mercury has been the most successful in their first 75 years, but if you think of any sporty engine and think, what's the best driving system? The first name that comes to mind will be Mercury. Boating holidays are a unique experience. Things seen from the sea take on new contours. Any boat will do. Let temptation take you on vacation. It's easy. So, this is the fantastic view you get from the terrace at the Yacht Club on Costa Smeralda. Made even better right now and for the next 20 days, because some of the most splendid super yachts from around the world are here. Some of you might have noticed that this is not Sardinia, and these aren't the rocks at Porto Servo. We are actually at the Yacht Club's base in the Caribbean in Virgin Gorda, where, right now, the fourth edition of the Laura Piana Caribbean Super Yacht Regatta and Rendezvous is taking place. E questo può succedere ai Caraibi, che dopo una mattinata di sole, adesso che le barche sono pronte ad uscire, ci stiano quattro gocce di pioggia. This can happen in the Caribbean, that, after a fantastic morning of sun, when the boats are ready to go out, it starts to spit with rain. But it doesn't worry anyone. Anyway, of course, the Italians aren't missing here. There are two boats that are here for the regattas right now. One, Robertisma with Vasco Vascotto, and the other, Rainbow, a fantastic 40-metre-long J-class. Prepared for the occasion by Pierre Luigi Laura Piana, who couldn't resist the fascination of this 1930s-built boat. I feel badly that I haven't done the 8 to 9,000 miles return trip in my song to come to this regatta. In fact, I'm a little upset because we'd already crossed the Atlantic in this first year with my song. I have betrayed it, but at least it's been a very interesting boat though, that I'd always looked at from a distance. For example, when we did the J-Class regatta in Saint-Tropez, these America's Cup boats from the 1930s are extremely fascinating. So, well, my betrayal is justified. 
all'inizio del, del, del rapporto con la vela noi sponsorizzavamo, anche se questa è una, una brutta parola, ma sostenevamo degli equipaggi eh, che facevano regalo. When we first started to sail, we sponsored, even though I hate the word, let's say we supported the crews that did the regattas. As such, even the actual Commodore crew from the Costa Smeralda Ricardo Bonadio with the glorious boat Rose Sailor V, but then we realized we needed to be more active in this world, meet the people and talk to the people we wanted to. To sponsor an event was important. We were part of loads of shows. La bellezza, l'eleganza di questo sport si sposa abbastanza bene con l'interpretazione che noi diamo dei prodotti che facciamo. The beauty and elegance of this sport marries well with the appearance of our products in that both have the present to the outside world. The boats carry a lot of behind-the-scenes work, the enormous research, the great support mechanisms, which I hope comes through in our products too. Every time I come uh, back again, uh, it's, it just feels great. Uh, you have the good winds, uh, you have a very nice uh, surroundings here, uh, you have the nice club here, uh, good organization, uh, just what we're looking for. It's wonderful. I mean, I, it's, since this regatta began, I think we only missed one. Uh, we were here in the first year. It's great to be back. Nothing's better than sailing in the VVI. I think uh, we know that uh, Persian God has a fantastic place to sail and it just lift up completely to what you expect. Sunshine, good breeze and good competition. So nothing else what you would like to wish when you go yacht racing. I am where I want to be, let's say that. <laughs> Loving it. A boat is the concentration of adrenaline and pure enjoyment. An offshore playground, a unique way to enjoy the sea. This is the first yacht by Riva completely built in light aluminium alloy, as well as the largest yacht in the world ever produced by the historical Italian brand, an icon of the world yachting industry. It is 122 Mythos, Riva's new flagship, an over 35 ton aluminium construction of 37 meter overall length and 7.6 meter beam. The 122 Mythos is a 100% Reva model, as confirmed by its clean lines, a painstaking care for details, the selection of traditional and yet evergreen materials like steel, wood and leather, which give every Reva yacht a unique, timeless flair. The 122 Mythos, with its stunningly balanced and refined outer lines and essential interiors, is presented in regal silver colour, a brand new light grey hue specially designed for this model to further highlight its dynamic and sleek profile. Some bright black superstructure details provide additional contrast to the yacht's aesthetic presence and contribute to its uniquely sleek and elegant style. The boat show ends here, but continue to surf the digital seas online. Comment, share your passion. The boat show, the sea in one click.